Hi guys and welcome to Aberfeldy here in the Scottish Highlands. I'm excited to bring in you guys along for yet another day of whiskey. Blended whisky as we know it came from, from John Dewar. I mean, it, it became more consistent and it became more drinkable. And he put his name on it. It was pride and it was heritage and you're putting your family name on the line. Aberfeldy is the inspiration for all of the Dewar's range. The honeyed sweetness, the floral notes of, of heather, the slight hint of, of smokiness that we, we find at the end is found throughout the whole of the Dewar's family. It's a wonderful single malt. Now interestingly I've been allowed to sit here and uh, work through some of these whiskies before we even go and do the tour. They've got a really interesting museum that runs through their history and how pivotal Dewar's, John Dewar's and son had been um, in actually bringing Scotch blend to market and, and actually building a bit of a name for Scotch. So they've set me up here with quite a nice little selection. Um, I've got the 12 year old and the 25 year old blends, Dewar blends. Um, but also the 12 year old single malt, the 21 year old single malt, apparently that is a progression of the 12. And then 20 year old exception, this has some additional maturation in sherry. This blend is really super mellow, it's, uh, they're all 40%. It's got a lot of that floral honey tone, a little bit of vinous, but altogether it's just super soft. It's got quite a nice um, spice to it on the palate though, it's not a total pushover. So next up I'm going to try the 25 year old blend, see how it progresses. Now it's certainly got more to it than the 12 year old blend did, but I wouldn't say it had been aged for twice as long. You've got plenty of stone fruits and more grassy tones, but it's a bit richer, it's, it, it comes across much less thin. But interestingly on the palate, it seems a little bit less fulfilling. There's that um, spiced element from the 12 year old is gone and it's just super mellow. So between those two, I would struggle to pick a favourite. They've both got their merits, but they're both super easy drinking and I guess that's what they're aiming for. So guys, welcome to our distillery and thank you all for coming today. Unfortunately, we don't allow any photography inside the main distillery building. As mentioned, the distillery doesn't typically allow any electronic devices within the facility. However, unfortunately for them, but fortunately for us, there was some unplanned downtime due to equipment failures. Nothing was operating within the distillery, which afforded me the opportunity, thanks to a very friendly gent named George, to follow him around with the distillery's own intrinsically safe camera and request the footage that you can see here. I've been asked to stress the fact that this isn't standard practice and I was very fortunate on the day. Aberfeldy's Visitor Centre is award-winning and attracts many visitors each year. The distillery has a capacity of 3.4 million litres per annum. They utilise a 7.5 tonne stainless steel mash tonne, 8 larch washbacks and 3 stainless steel washbacks with an average fermentation time of around 70 hours and 4 stills to produce their spirit. Their stills are a little unusual as they utilise a spiralised heating element rather than the more common cylindrical design. The spirit is then cooled using tube and shell condensers. We're going to head up to the, uh, the warehouse at the top here. Again, we'll head to the uh, first room here. This first section of the warehouse is the filling store, and it's where we used to fill the cask, hence the name. The way it would work is when we first make that new spirit, that heart spirit, instead of it going to Glasgow as it is now, originally it came through here, through that black pipe you see against the wall, into this spirit vat, the spirit receiver, for the two hoses to then be used by the workers to fill the casks. All of our casks are bought pre-used overseas. Now we have the USA bourbon cask, which typically holds around about 190 litres to 200 litres. Using an ex-bourbon cask gives a light colour and a sweet, almost a honey and vanilla character to our spirit. We're also going to use an ex-Spanish sherry cask, and these can hold up to 500 litres. 
Sherry casks typically give a dark red colour while holding a much more rich, fruity character as well. Now the names that you see here, these are all the names of the original casks, or the original distilleries, that went into making the Dewar's White Label blend. So a lot of these names are mothballed now, aren't they? Absolutely, about 70%. I think the majority of the ones that are still here are the ones that we actually own as well. Yeah. Okay, so again, this was the original warehouse. We used to hold and mature all 5,000 casks we needed in the building alone. The Dunnage warehouse um, is very traditional style. It's typically used by thick walls, a low ceiling, and a loose gravel floor uh, under the casks themselves. The reasons for that, it gave a very cool ambient temperature in the building as you feel to reduce the rate of natural evaporation. So as you see, in 21 years, 2% per year, we've lost just about half. Naturally, countries with hotter climates are going to lose more per year. For yourself, you're on the, the cask tasting tour. Uh, have you got the head through to the room behind you? Can you have a Oh, it's personal taste, absolutely. The, the oiliness is certainly something that draws me to it. Like Talisker Storm, I really like Talisker Storm, but that's probably as much peated, kind of smoky flavour as I can handle. But again, what you've got here, a uh, sherry cask, as you can probably tell, from 1999, sitting at 57.6%. But we'll, uh, we'll take that back across. So I'm back from my connoisseur's tour and I've got six whisky to add to the tasting. So this 12 year old is quite delicate at 40%. It's really easy drinking. I don't think I get quite as much of it as they put down on the notes, but a lot of that um, floral tones, the honey, some nice spice on the palate and the finishes are, are drying. Next up is the 21 year old. Uh, this has been sat to breathe for a fairly healthy time now. Much more cinnamon and spice. Still, there's a lot of that um, meadowy tone, but it's quite grassy as well, fresh grass. Some vanilla and some citrus. Really opened up very nicely from the 12, and you aren't really being hurt by the low ABV. Lovely mouthfeel as well, waxy and plenty more of that spice. I enjoy that one, it's aged well. So this 20 year old exceptional cask has been matured for the last couple of years in a sherry cask. You can really see that come through on the colour. That really works very well. You've still got hints of the baking spices in the background, but it's primarily the um, kind of smooth sorbet fruit. There's some ground coffee bean, cocoa dust. Still some of that kind of floral meadow tone but it's hiding behind the sweet sherry influence, lots of berries, those kind of fruits. Now the finish is interesting, the finish is quite similar to the 21 year old, but it's got this, rather than it carrying through the sweetness from the sherry cask, it's got a kind of a bitter drying astringency. So the last one is the single cask from the warehouse, and I've forgotten all of the details for it. I think it was a 19 year old from a sherry, their cask at about 58% was it? 58, 59, something around there. I'm getting quite an intense chocolatey note. And chocolate is something that I rarely pick up on a whiskey. The honey tone is amplified at this strength. It's really, it's thick. It's not pungently sweet, but it's, it's got a sweetness to it. Citrus tones and stone fruits. That grassy and heather tone comes through on the palate to some dry hay. Then those sweeter tones, some of the um, caramel and vanilla. And it begins to build a fruitiness, a nice warmth, more of that spice. I'm enjoying that one, it's definitely the best of the six. So there you have it, another Scotch distillery visited and uh, what really made this one stand out for me, aside from the history and the delicate nature of the spirit, um, was the distillery centre staff. Um, Craig put on an excellent tour. George really helped me out with getting footage. We were really lucky to uh, actually be here on a maintenance day and Zoe who really looked after my wife, wife and baby while I was off enjoying whiskey.